Hello and welcome to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson. Today, it's going to be about the relationship to yourself. Learn about yourself. That's why I've titled this one in particular, because as we go through life day in and day out, most of us just tend to take each day as it comes. And that's a great attitude to have. You're not going to let too much bother you, but you're just going to greet the day, enjoy it, ride it out, go to sleep and reach for the next day. Now, there's something to consider. And I ask people to do this specifically because when you have things that you're turning over in your head, let's say you're trying to figure out a problem. You know, like I say, you're cruising through your day, but things pop in there. How do you solve your problems? Do you have um, a reference tool that you use? Is it your smartphone? Do you use an encyclopedia? Do you ask somebody for help? All of those are tools that you can use. Now, when it comes to learning about yourself, what do you reference? Is it a relative? Uh, Do you have a diary that you use? Is it a counselor? Is it memories from friends that might help you recall something that's happened? How do you learn about yourself? This is a question I ask because as it is, our memory works the way it works. Some things stick and some things just fade away. And the fade away part is what I'm going to focus on for the moment. We are a collection of all of our experiences in life. And whether it's when you first learned to ride the bicycle and you had that aha moment where you were able to ride without the training wheels, or when you were roller skating, could be skateboarding, skiing, climbing a tree, learning to swing a hammer, learning to sew, Uh, learning, you know, even walking, which is just one of the basic skills that we have as as a human being. We don't necessarily remember some of these things, but when it's something like walking or, or talking, it's something we use every day. But when it's something that might have as much impact as all of these things that I've just mentioned, but it happened, it was a flashpoint. It was just something that happened at some point in time in your life and it left an impact that sort of reverberates. It's like an echo. Now, you know, an echo, you hear it and then it fades off, but the energy of that echo exists. It just tends to dissipate because it is spreading out. Now, things that have happened to you in life have the same effect. Some really hit you and it stays with you. It's like when you start walking, then you just walk from that point on. Or if you're riding a skateboard, if you're skiing, driving a car, that's a skill that you acquire, but you have to build on it. But when something, and I'm going to use this example, when something uh, traumatic happens, let's say, and because I'm, I'm going to go this direction for a bit and I'll, I'll choose something else in a bit. Well, when something traumatic happens, it alters your way of behaving. And like I said, it's a flash and down the road, You may not remember that that's something that happened whenever it did. And and I can give you a, for instance, have you ever been the one who, let's say you were playing in the driveway, the ball rolled out into the street and you're running out to the street to get it because you know, you've got to have the ball to play, but a car is coming and either you are so startled by that car running up on you, hitting the horn or somebody yelling at you to get out of the street It just shakes you to the core. And when you're a young person, because you obviously don't know the world well enough to be able to be safe in all of these situations. It's someone who's looking out for you. They turn, they look, they notice you're going down the driveway. They see the ball. They see you chasing it and they yell at you. And then you get scolded for having run out in the street to chase the ball. Now, your experience with that is that you were just trying to get possession of that ball. But the person who was responsible for you yelled and screamed at you because they were scared to death for you. They were scared about what was going to happen, that you were going to get hurt, get injured and, and all of the business surrounding that. Now you as a, as a little person don't have a concept of all of that. You just know that you've been traumatized somehow. This is the experience that I want to talk about when I say learn about yourself and the reverberations that it has from that point forward. Now, I think most people are going to remember that experience of do not run out into the street. 
You may not always remember the being yelled at, but you're going to remember do not run out into the street. And it may be followed by learn to look both ways because some of these things are really concepts that they have to build on because when you're really small, you're really young, the mind isn't mature enough to be able to hang on to all of these things. But as you grow up and you mature, then you learn to recognize the sounds of cars. You learn to be able to look at the walk, don't walk sign. And, and you know, you're coached along on all of these things. But going back to that experience of being startled and being scared and being, you know, that whole thing, the, the being yelled at at that moment, like I said, it has reverberations. Now, that in the, in the experience of someone keeping you from running out into the street is something that saves your life. There are other kinds of experiences that hit you just as hard and maybe they don't save your life, but they definitely have a resounding impact on you. And it starts this thing of why you fear something. You may not even understand it. Let's say it's something that starts happening years down the road. Again, you get yelled at for something. You have an experience with someone. And it's almost like describing a post-traumatic stress. Something triggers it. You may not have had an experience with a car in years. But it could be the example of maybe... You were just walking, didn't notice that sign said, don't walk. And you step out into the street, a car comes up, honks the horn, and you are startled, just taken right back to that childhood memory of being yelled at. And remember, you were a young person then, so you can't comprehend all of this drama that's going on around it. Those feelings are very very powerful. And I'm going to talk about this in particular because if you happen to sense that you're having anxiety around something and it could be, you know, you're an adult, you pretty much are in control of your life. But when someone starts to approach you in a certain way that seems to be out of your comfort zone, it's out of your control to even to be able to do something about it. And I want to liken this to when you have the experience of being yelled at or, or, or being punished. How immobilizing it is when you get scolded, you're told that you're bad, you're not supposed to do this again. How could you ever do that? And you keep getting guilted into that same cycle of of the memory. Now, parents have to do this. Excuse me. Parents happen to do this quite a bit. And it's in the business of being a parent where you have to be careful about how you communicate to your kids. The how and the why is very important. But I'm, I'm going to focus on the how. Communicating with your kids. You want to develop a way of talking to your kids that helps you get the point without shocking the crap out of them every time you speak to them. I mean, there comes a point when kids can become tone deaf to that and they don't get the message. But be, but long before that is the place where you're trying to help them learn to become safe. Now, there are places in, in our lives when the people who are responsible for us corrupt that 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 part of the learning and tend to ab go to a place where it almost becomes abuse. And this is the place where parents tend to lose control of who they are and their responsibility and tend to take it out on people. Now I'm going to, and, and the, you know, the people being their children. So I'm going to take a break right here and I'm going to pick up with this after the break.
Hello and welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson, talking about learn about yourself. Now, the reason I'm I'm bringing this up is because there are those of us out in, in the world that have had some sort of, of strong experience and it has definitely changed us. It's changed how we perceive things and we limp along with these interpretations in our in ourselves, in our way of, of reacting to stuff. And we don't necessarily know why that anxiety about something exists. And it can be very, very, very difficult to process this on our own. So I'm going to talk about why counseling helps that. But I'm doing this setup here so that it might help you or help stimulate your memory into something that may have happened to you that you are now going to recall. Yeah, you know, I've had a little bit of anxiety with that. And, and you know, I've never really thought about where that came from. But, you know, maybe that's affecting a lot more than I realize. And this happens to to lots of people. You may have anxiety about something and not realize it when it comes up. It's only after the fact because a lot of us, they we, we avoid it. We don't even know we're avoiding it. But then when it happens, it can be very debilitating. It could it, it could stifle you. It could stop you from thinking. You I mean, you can find yourself just feeling, um, you know, your throat tightening up. Just imagine this. If you have difficulty with public speaking, some people have a, a, a real hard time with that. In fact, I've come to understand that that's the number one fear for a lot of people, which is public speaking. The, the, the physical experience of that, the throat tightening, maybe the stomach getting nauseous, uh, you're getting queasy, you just, um, all kinds of those, those sorts of experiences. That's the body reacting. That's your body reacting to something. And it. so if, if you take that, instead of it reacting to public speaking, say maybe you're reacting to the behavior of someone around you. And let me use as an illustration, say maybe a boss, someone that you work with. And this person who has power over you, has a, a, has an awful lot of influence on what you do in any particular day, uh, especially at the job, because that's your livelihood. So you pretty much do what you were instructed to do. And you could be having a lot of trouble with this person, this authority person, person of authority. Now, I want to make a distinction with that between, you know, people that have oppositional defiance disorder, which is basically people that have who are, who are dealing with those who are in charge and just won't do anything that they tell us. That's that, that's a different experience. That's not necessarily the anxiety of, you know, the throat getting tight and things like that, that I'm trying to describe to you. That's just having an issue with people in authority with them trying to tell us what to do. Now, what I'm trying to get at in terms of helping you get a sense of is if you have a boss Someone who is who, who you answer to and they give you instructions, you try to comply with that. And guess what? That's not enough. Or you did something wrong. So then you try to do over. You try to fix it. They're not happy. Oh, you, now you're feeling, oh, what did I do wrong? I, I, I'm, I need to go fix it. And they come at you again and again and again. You know, it's like that experience of you going the down the driveway and that person is yelling at you and, and you constantly get berated for that one thing that happened long ago. Now, eventually you grow past that time period in life, but you don't forget how that felt. And what most people do as we progress along in life is we try to avoid having those kinds of experiences again. So anything that we think is going to give us that sort of feeling, that sort of reaction in our body, we're going to avoid. And we may even make up the reason. We might decide, well, I'm not even going to walk on that side of the street. I don't want to talk to those kinds of people. I don't want to be in, in you know, that color room. It, it, you know, all kinds of things that you don't even realize are being triggered because of that experience that you had. Now, it sounds crazy, but this is what we do as human beings. Now, we think well, our, our main goal is to protect ourselves. That's why we have the reaction. 
because it's sort of the, the body's defense mechanism say, okay, get away. That's danger. And when we have reactions to things, but we, we don't know why. Oftentimes these things happen because, of, like I said in the example, it's a childhood experience. Now what therapists and counselors are good at doing, and because this is their training, when you have these sorts of experiences in your life, the ones that I'm talking about, you're just having anxiety around something, they want to be able to, to, to look at it, take it apart, and see if we can begin to fixate on where this happened in your life. Now, there might be similar things that have happened along the road that may give us clues as to where its origin. But if, the, but the closer we can get to it, then we can sort of untangle it and then help you gra- get a grasp on where you are right now so that you don't have to avoid a particular color or avoid walking on that side of the street or something. And, and believe me, I mean, that sounds crazy, but this is how we react to stuff. We don't even know why we do it. We just do. And we could create all kinds of crazy explanations for this because maybe, maybe we get called on it and we make up some kind of crazy thing just to answer for it. And, and we might do it in jest because it is that out there. But when, and and, and I'm going to go back to this, but when you cannot quite grasp what the cause of that is, I mean, Generally, if it's fairly recent, you can recall the memory. But when it, a lot of these things start in our childhood, we don't. We don't remember why. We just remember something happened. And then when we move forward in our timeline from that, we just say, okay, we don't do these behaviors and we'll be safe. Do these particular behaviors, we stay safe. And that's how our mind processes things. Now, to give you an idea how powerful this is, now I've been giving you examples of things that make you want to run away. Think about it this way. Let's say you have that experience of you're on stage, you're a little kid, you're reading your your first script, or you're doing the dance recital, or you're twirling the baton, or you're playing an instrument, whatever it is, and you get a lot of praise and validation for that. You don't ever forget that. You begin to build on, you begin, you keep doing the things that got the, the good attention, the praise, all the validation, and we build on that. See, that's something that, that has a different trajectory, but it is just as powerful. I can remember the first time when I was a little kid that I was on stage. Uh, it was, it was a play. I was in second grade and I mean, I remember you know, ironically, I, I, even to this day, I can remember some of the voices of the people that were on stage. And I remember I was actually kind of lost. I was supposed to be sort of the quote unquote understudy for someone else. It was a Christmas play. I was supposed to be the understudy for a kid called little John. And it's funny. I walked out on stage. I wasn't supposed to be there. And well, you know, I guess it was cute because when I walked off, somebody said you weren't supposed to be on there, but I remember what it felt like to be on that stage and smiling and looking out at the audience that was that's something that's never left. I had a great time at it. And it's those things that we have a great time with we tend to hold on to. And sometimes we don't remember. But again, the, our, our cells build on this stuff. So there is an example of when it works for you and it sort of propels you forward and you build on it. And in the other example, I was talking about how, yeah, that traumatic ex- experience, you build on it going forward, but it's all about protecting you from something. It's very powerful. I'm going to take another break, and I'll be right back after this.
And we're back. This is John Johnson and the Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. And this is learn about yourself. So this is the relationship you have with yourself. And so I've given you an illustration of something that happens when it was in childhood and you have an experience and that experience can really alter your trajectory. But on the other side, so so there was a negative experience. And then I gave you an example of a positive experience and how it changes the trajectory of things, how we can build on, you know, either one. And think about where you go when you're building on the one that's based on fear. It's very, very limiting, very limiting. The one that was based on the positive experience expands your world, doesn't it? Well, there are lots of people. I think all of us have had some sort of experience of the one that's limiting. And it's and it's based on some sort of fear, fear of something bad happening, us getting hurt, all those things. And and it gets reinforced time and time and time again. And it may not be with just that particular incident, but it's with the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, and face it, life is full of dangers. There are lots of things that, that can happen to us, and we're always on the lookout to try to protect ourselves. So it's easy to have all of that that, that fear reinforced. So it takes a real conscious effort to be able to let that stuff go. Now, how do we do that? Some people do meditation. Other people go to church where they can be around others that they can fellowship and and they can share the warmth and and the validation and the comfort that comes with being around other people who, who share the same beliefs. Other people jog so that they can clear their mind. And some people self medicate, whether it's with medications or whether they're smoking their favorite herb, what whatever they choose, there, there's lots of variables out there. Now, one of the ways in which I try to encourage people to deal with their fears is to talk to a therapist. Why therapists? Because therapists understand how the mind is wired and where we bury some of those things that cause us the most concern. And with a therapist... They create a safe space in order to unpack those things so we can see what what's really there. Sometimes there's a lot there. Sometimes there's really a lot there. It has lots of deep roots. It's like an old tree. And when those roots begin to travel, you can see how it affects so many other things. And think of it, for example, in, in some of the worst cases, it's like dysfunction. And it just keeps multiplying. You know, you get a dysfunction and... And, and you pass that that perception on to other people, all of your fears and, and worries and concerns, then it just multiplies. And that, that's kind of what dysfunction does. But by being with the therapist, you're in a safe place. We can talk about the roots to this and unwind it to the place where, okay, now you can begin to deal with it. You can see how it's affected you. And when something similar and that used to be a trigger for you comes in, let's say your orbit, so to speak, then you know how you have some tools that you can handle it. You can work that differently. And that's a very important thing to know for you in your life that you can face something that has consumed you and and sometimes subconsciously, but to know that you can face it and deal with it. It's hard to do these things on your own, but with enough coaching, you can get past these things. Some people are very capable of reading books that will, you know, some authors are very good at, at writing in a way that enlightens you to some of the things that you may have experienced that you've forgotten, that you've put away. And by the written word, and I love it when they when a good writer does this and be it the self-help book or you know, be a spiritual teachings, what, whatever it is for you. Remember you are learning about yourself. However they get the point across and that you can get connected with it and untangle what's causing the fear so that you can now face it. it it's you have your aha moment. And again, the learning about yourself is having as many of these aha moments as possible Think of the last time you actually did something for the first time. Think of the last time you really had that moment where you learned something that was substantial. And I don't mean just 
reading about some fact in life. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about personalizing it. This is what the juice of life comes from, is when you can personalize something and build on it for you. We get very comfortable with being spectators. And being a spectator in life, sometimes that's what we're just resigned to do because we're too tired to do much else. But we just can't stay tired of investing in ourselves. I think you should want to think about how can you have the next experience that's going to make a difference to you. And it's not always about money. And I know that for a lot of people, they feel strapped for resources in order to do this sort of thing. Thinking of a possibility here, it could be a book. Read something that you feel is going to be very enlightening for you. Personalize it. If it's your favorite author and there's a topic out there that you've been thinking about it, well, use this as a catalyst to go grab that book and start turning a few pages and look at some things that will that you can build on. And I'm talking about something that engages you enough that you want to share that with someone you care about. Get out of the stands, get onto the court, and do something that really motivates you to be engaged. I had a project around the house that I had been hemming and hawing about, just thinking, overanalyzing, which is something that I know that I tend to do. Well, I did that analyzing a lot less and got active and got busy. Finished my project, and now I'm tickled death about it. I am motivated to go take on some other things that I have been thinking about. And I also now have the time to do it. I cleared my schedule. I have another example. I have a dear friend who needed to consult with some people about some aches and pains that they've been having. And for what it is, it was the fear of the worst kept them in the stands. So they wouldn't talk to the people they needed to talk to and really get some answers. Well, they finally did so. They finally had enough aches and pains and, and got out there and did something and found out it's not as bad as it was. I mean, if you could imagine how long this person spent worrying about all of this, but now they finally have done something, they can get on with their life. So they've been able to put some of the fears away. And in, in my own case, what I finally did was take something off the list so that I can put something else on it that I that I want to do, something that's fun. And that's what life has in store for you if you take the opportunity to do it. I know a lot of us analyze things, and we do that because it's a fear. And I realized that was my own problem, is I was stopping myself from making progress, and thinking about it was my excuse. That was my story. I had to keep thinking about it, processing it, Trying to make it perfect. Sometimes you just have to put one foot in front of the other and figure it out along the way. And as far as why it took so long for me to get active, again, this, you know, we all have things that we have to work through. And I started to realize what some of mine were. And I've had failures that I couldn't explain. And because that happened, I was worried about creating a bigger problem than I had the skills to manage. Well, at this point in time in my life, I have a lot of skills to be able to handle these things so I can fear a lot less. See, think about it. When I didn't have the skill set to be able to handle these things, which was quite some time ago, I developed a fear for taking on new things. And now that I have lived long enough to deal with the stuff, I was thinking about it in the old mindset. So I've sort of advanced the timeline here and I've got things all in the same space. So when I take it on, I know I can handle it, I can deal with it, and then move on to the next. Give yourself the same benefit of the doubt. You can handle it, deal with it, face it. You'll find that what you fear 90% of the time doesn't happen. That's just how it is. Most of it's made up in our head because we are very creative about that. Remember how it all started. It started with somebody caring about us, being worried, and we carry that on and on and on in our lives, and we create it into this big mushroom cloud. So let's get some containment on that. Think about some things you want to deal with. If you can't do it on your own now, consider using a counselor. 
maybe grabbing a book on how to deal with fears, something. Get the conversation started in yourself so that you can free your mind. Learn about yourself. I'm John Johnson. This is the Gold Estate Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. Thank you for listening.